but I can guarantee you this version is gonna be sick. Hi, this is Jeff Ellis. We're in Hollywood, California. This is East West Studios, Studio 4, and we are sitting in my Atmos room. And today we're gonna talk about mixing music and my experiences mixing in Studio 1. I'm primarily a music mixer, and today we're at East West Studios where I actually got my first internship. After that period of time, I was so blessed to have met Frank Ocean. Somehow I became his engineer and I was with him for about five years. Now I have my own mix room at the place where I started as an intern. I mean, the last couple of years we've worked with Doja Cat and Joji and The Neighborhood. And right now we're working with this crazy artist named David D4VD. An opportunity came up to where I need to learn how to use Studio One. I want to try it out. Mayor Hawthorne's latest album, For All Time, just came out. Mixed the whole stereo thing down. We didn't do an Atmos mix of any of that album. Let's try it in spatial, because that particular album is so hi-fi and there's so much depth to it. It's so well arranged and it's just like a classic album, right? I was like, let's go, let's see what happens. The biggest thing that I want to look out for when I'm doing these like mixes when it's been stereo already is I want to make sure that the Atmos version is not a different piece of art, meaning I don't want you to get a different emotional response from the song really uh, depending on did you listen to it on stereo in Spotify or did you get the Apple Music spatial audio version, right? If I'm able to get the song to be more immersive and have a little bit more depth without any of the artistry of it changing, that's gonna be my ultimate goal. I've come to find that humans don't really like sounds coming at them from behind. Now I can, I can literally just pan the kick drum anywhere. I could pan it into the ceiling, I could pan it behind me. And just because you can pan at something any, everywhere doesn't mean you need to. And you can also just do a mostly stereo mix inside of the Atmos world, or you can make it like a kind of like a wide, encompassing stereo mix. I like to have music come up to about right here. And if I start pushing any sound too far beyond that point, I get this weird like, predatory, like there's a lion behind me feeling like, I feel I feel like we've evolved to not like to have too much stuff coming behind us. In this particular song, um, the drums are kind of like right up the center. I took the, uh, the kind of overhead cymbal sounds and kind of like widened those out a bit. And then for all the percussion elements, um, I put these all to a group, like I can show the overheads here. The overheads are like up a little bit and just widened out a bit. You can see my little head here. It's getting pretty wide here, but the like the kick and snare are, are pretty much like right up the center or close to it. And I'm just massaging these sounds out into this big, like, like this big atmosy field. Um, and I'm always going, as I'm doing it, I'm going back and forth between the atmos mix and the stereo mix to make sure none of the intrinsic uh, level relationships between the, the parts of the song are changing as I'm panning these things out. It's really not that complicated. If you have a really well mixed song with great stems, it's really it takes no time at all to, it takes some time to like get used to being able to hear the difference between Atmos and stereo to where you're not like all of a sudden having an Atmos mix where the vocal is much lower. And, um, but if you just constantly go back and forth between your stereo, and your Atmos and make sure that all the balance between the elements in the song and the aesthetic does not change between stereo and Atmos. It's just getting more immersive. Uh, then you'll end up having Atmos mixes to where the artist isn't like, what is this? Like, be sensible, be artful, don't be a technician and have fun with it.